Okay, it is March 25th, a lousy, miserable, rainy, overcast day. But I felt compelled to take Gavin out and introduce him to the elusive three-armed dog. I ain't gotta watch. Good, good three-armed man. Good three-armed man, Kiko. Good, Gavin. So we're supervising them, super careful, obviously. We don't want any setbacks. This is, we've had uh, Kiko running around now for a few days. Um, Gavin, you know, we try to get him out as much as we can. We mix our obedience with play. And uh, we're careful. We're trying to, we, we are aware of a situation where there could be a spontaneous act of violence and we're trying to avoid it but we don't want to ignore it and so far my friend Kiko's doing fine and my friend Gavin's doing fine they're ignoring each other and I prefer that so the hope is that we can control the interaction it's not just a free for it can never be a free-for-all we have to have control over the dogs and see what their issues are are they gonna fight over something is it like Kiko gets on his back and now that he only has three legs, does that cause him to become defensive when he's on his back and there's O dogs hovering over him? I don't know the answer to this. We can't ask either one of them what their, their issues are. So we try to observe it and fix it. Good boy, Kiko! Kiko and the man! Kiko and the man! Where's your buddy Gavin? I love you. What's the matter, Gavin? Kiko, say hi. Say you want to go home. Take me. I'm a good boy. Say, Gavin, uh, Kiko, t tell everybody you're a good boy. Don't even worry about that leg problem. Oh, boy. The amazing thing is Kiko can run faster than most dogs with four legs. It's an amazing thing. Talk about inspirational to us humans. I complain about my sore knees in the morning. Kiko here is like, whatever. Amazing. Between Kiko and Ty, they offer amazing inspirational Insight, I guess the word is. I don't know. Look, it's. I just don't. Don't. I can't Im imagine. He's the roughest, toughest, mentally sound dog that we have, and he just he doesn't stop. He can outrun our friend Gavin. He can outrun the Roddy Raja, Camille's lovely dog. Good. Play, babe. Play. Oh, come on! I just missed some gymnastics. Some three-legged dog gymnastics. Come on, let's teach the class. Good doggy! Good to Chico. Chico boy! Teach the class. Three-legged gymnastics. Good boy! Good boy! Good boy! Back scratch. Oh. Oh. That feels good, babe. That feels good. Good boy, man! Good boy, man! Come on, shake it up. Good Gavin. Good boy Gavin. Gavin's a little concerned about the camera. He think it's he thinks it's an instrument of I don't know what. Good Gavin. Good boy man. Go play with this nut. Play with this nut. Go boy. Good boy. Go ahead. Come on. I can't get you to play. Jesus. I've done such a good job here. Look at this. So when life's got you down, you want to talk about serenity, spirituality. Here we go, right here. Come and play with some dogs. And the more wacky they are, the more fun they are. The more stress relieving it is, for me anyway. So if we think we have our problems in life, this old girl, boy, girl, has been sitting in a shelter for 11 months or so, I guess. You know, 
future was not promising. Three legs. This little one had all kind of eye problems and funguses and this and that. Not much hope also from the Brookhaven shelter. Two shelter dogs with a bleak future. So when you think your future is bleak, come down to Houndstown and play with one of these or tie the blind dog and see how they appreciate life. They appreciate every odor. Every spot of dog urine in this field to them is a blessing. Okay, I'm getting a little long-winded. So, a couple of comments I'd like to make about labeling dogs. And I want to make it clear that when we socialize dogs and interact, we're doing it very, very carefully. And shelters, municipal shelters, they don't have the luxury to do that. So quite correctly, they have to label dogs. They have to label dogs if they're animal aggressive, because these dogs have a potential of being that, just like humans have a potential of being. So when the, so when the dogs are in a municipal shelter, for the safety of the staff and the other dogs, they have to have assigned some label. And that's fine. So what we do here is try to take a, a calculated approach and re try to remove the label. Try. It's never done. So these dogs are big, powerful dogs. Very powerful. And they can cause significant damage. But they're not psychotic. They're not unpredictable. I don't think. At least I haven't seen it yet. So dogs like people, if you can predict and identify behavior of a dog, some dog has a phobia or a fear, that's not psychotic, that's strictly a phobia, then you deal with it. But if they're so unstable and unbalanced that they can't, you can't predict anything, then you have a problem. So right now, as of today, tomorrow is a different day, and this is the beauty of working with dogs. Dogs, as an example to humans, live in the absolute moment. Yesterday and tomorrow are irrelevant. Right now, these two dogs are enjoying this beautiful bouquet of wet dog urine that is all around this field. And to, that, to them, this is like a florist shop. Most people would come here and be like, ugh. To them, this is a, fl a floral bouquet of your dog urine. And they're coming here and they're enjoying it. I'm providing the, le the necessary leadership. I'm not going around sniffing the urine with them. That's their, their dogs. So I think my point is we need to take what everybody says into careful consideration and try to remove the label and safely allow these dogs to live a life, a happy life. And I think anybody, I, I can't, I don't understand why somebody, I can't even see what's wrong. Why wouldn't somebody take these dogs? It's not a health issue with uh, Kiko, there's nothing. There's not, no extra health issues. He's healthier than most dogs that I come across. Same thing with Gavin. So when people are looking for good dogs and they go to a pet shop or a breeder, I don't get it. I don't really, I really don't get it. But because I get so much out of this, it's, it's hard to explain the, the, the benefit that, that th this can give somebody on a quiet Sunday morning or in this case, afternoon. Wonderful. I'm going on, I know, but it's a particularly touching time for me, particularly this, these dogs. When you stop and smell the, stop and smell the urine, right guys? Uh, Gavin, would you agree? Stop and smell the urine, everyone? Or is that roses? Roses to you, right, baby? Roses to you, that wet urine. All right. Okay, so here's the lovely Camille. After a hard night on the town, she's here. She's here for spiritual renewal. So if life's given you a hangover and you, you didn't sleep well on a Sunday morning, come to Houndstown and the dogs will rehabilitate you. You want the best thing for a hangover? A three-legged dog. These dogs are up for adoption, right, Camille? Yeah. Both of them. If you take two, Gavin has spare parts. So, you know, easy, easy, easy. Good, good. Whoa.
Uh oh. How are they with toys? Do we know? We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is that a fast dog? I'd put who'd put their money on Kiko to come in first. Look at this. We'll see if they're possessive over toys shortly. Thank you. We learn a lot from dogs. Come to our Sunday morning rehabilitation work, our spiritual renewal. Sunday mornings, after a bad night out on the town and a morning of self-reflection. Ask these guys how they were. Look at them, happy to see you, no problem. Be careful, good. So again, we do this calculated, but quite honestly, this is a, a, a really a magical situation. Magical, in my mind. Shelter dogs, confused, abandoned. They living in the moment. No texting, just digging a hole, smelling urine. Life doesn't get better than that. Right, Camille? Yeah, go ahead. Now that you remember, easy. He may have been. It all matters here. I doesn't? He's got a resource. Let's see if he guards it. Right, Camille. Structure. Camille hit the magic word here at the Spiritual Renewal Center. Should have AA meetings here, maybe, huh? I can, I can 